Okay, let's go over the basic units. If we take our mouse and left click, the first thing that you'll notice on your settler unit here, and remember we can see details over here on the left, but you'll notice that this unit has a little yellow plus sign right to the side of it. If you ever see that, that means that there are multiple units, but the game will only display one of them. So if you see that, you can left click, and it will open up a dialog with, um, with, with all the units. Now we can scroll through, and these are, with the game rules that we've been doing, the five starting units. Two settlers, two workers, and an explorer. And let's go ahead and go over these one by one. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is to double-click on your explorer in the menu. Once he is selected, then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and pick a direction. The thing about settlers are they can move three times farther than your average unit. Most units can move three tiles per turn only on flat land. And the explorer can move nine tiles regardless of terrain type. Normally, with a unit, when you move over non-flat terrain, it will instantly take up all of his move points. So let's go ahead and highlight a tile, press the G on the keypad, and then left click. And so when you press G, it opens up a selector. I highly recommend that you, so you don't accidentally click in the wrong spot, move your mouse to where you want to go, press G, and then left click. Okay, then I usually take this and just kind of explore small area around. And I like to not go too, I like to not click into the black because I want to be able to change my decision as to where he goes based on what I see next. Now, there's kind of a weird glitch with this game. Um, the Explorer units, it's going to say, Explorers have this weird thing where their units, they move in thirds of a move point. So it will say three moves, but really that's nine. And you'll notice that it subtracts one third each time. And we can always look over here to the left to see how many. So really he has one and one third move points left. So for him only, for only this type of unit, that's actually four moves. So then we can come over and get three more moves. Okay, and now he's got this little icon, like with like a, it almost looks like it's a low health bar, but it's not, it just means that he's out of move points or has used most of them. Unit's health bars are actually up at the top here of their icon. Okay, now we have a settler. Now, we're going to want to make sure that we build them in an area with high food. We're, this is kind of a difficult one. There isn't really good options for food around here, but we have a little fish here, which fish, fish is good for food. And so we'll go ahead and start here. You press the B button. Name your city, whatever you'd like to name it. Okay. And your very first city is your capital. Now we have... The first thing that you're going to want to do is in the very beginning of the game, almost always, you will want to set what your city's building by, you see the status bar here, by clicking the little drop down and clicking on settlers. Okay, and now down here you'll see present units. Down, This is where it shows you the units that are currently present in the city. And you can see those are our three remaining ones that we've yet to move. So let's go ahead and take this settler. And if you'll notice here, your cities are going to work at 5 by 5 square minus the corners. So this is the area that of land that your, this city can work. So you want to try to avoid overlapping cities. And as long as under view you have city outlines checked, if you do, you'll see a gray line here showing where that city is. So let's look for green. You'll see that the plains are okay for food. Fish are great for food. Um, and we see that uh, and dark green is really good. So light green and dark green are, are good. Forests, hills, mountains, 
the marshes, which you'll see over here, not so much. So let's, I say, we'll go ahead and head out looking for greener pastures over here by that wheat. Okay. Now your worker units, they build roads, which allow your units to move faster and increase trade in your empire. And they also can irrigate land, providing more food and allowing your cities to grow bigger. I'm a big believer in the beginning of the game to build, use them immediately to start building roads out that future settlers can move quicker to new lands. So I move him over one because your cities automatically start with a road on that tile, even though you can't see it. Press R for road, and he starts building. And then we'll do the same with the next guy. We'll bring him over here. Press G for go, left click, and then we'll press R for road. And that's the first turn. So you'll want to look for areas with high food that fall within that uh, five by five workable area, minus the corners, and try to avoid overlapping them. So this uh, this settler, he's I'm gonna probably gonna want to build him, maybe even right on top of the wheat, maybe over a little bit over there. And yeah, in the very beginning, you'll want to. You'll want to have almost every city building settlers for at least the, the first few turns. And then after that, maybe build some defensive units. So that is the that is the first turn. It's important to build cities as quick as you can, but you don't want to build them in absolute garbage. So this it, the coast is nice. That fish is nice. At least there's a couple plain tiles right here. But if we look at all this desert here, there's really no food there. These hills, there's not much food there in the forest. So this is not the best place for a city, but we didn't really have a lot of good options here. It was since there was a little bit of food here, it was better to start build to start a city here and send our other settler off to greener pastures. Well, I think that that uh, go ahead that uh, covers it for the first turn.